Welcome, everybody, to Rodeo Radio, episode 97. Um, I have to admit that watching and hearing that song and those pictures, you know, uh, those of you that knew Slow Pain, it's, it's pretty hard to even speak on it now because we lost someone that we love. Um, someone lost a brother. Someone lost a son. We've lost a good friend, you know. Um, so it's very hard to even speak on it, but uh, we're going to try to get through it tonight and honor him. Uh, he was a blessing to us, so uh, may his name uh, continue to live on. May his voice continue to live on forever. So uh, I don't have any special announcements to give, but so we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. And my first guest for tonight is Sal Capone. How you doing, brother? I'm all right. I'm all right. It's right here. Did you get a chance to peep out, peep out over there, those pictures? Yeah, yeah. What was going through your mind, man, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, number sadness, man. Yeah. You know, memories, sadness, just, uh, you know, I'm just trying to hold up right here, to be honest with you, you know what I mean? Just, uh, just trying to keep it together, man, pretty much, you know? Yeah. Um, the services, um, well, the one service that they had was 
Wednesday that just passed, correct? Correct. Okay, I, I just want to get fill in a little bit of, uh, of info that people may be uh, wondering. Um, when I first heard of his passing, um, I was at the beach and um, uh, I couldn't believe it. Somebody sent me a flyer that said, uh, rest in peace, slow pain. And, um, you know, I, I didn't want to believe it because um, I guess a couple of days prior, somebody was putting up a post that somebody else had passed away and then it turned out to be not true. So I was hoping that that was the case here, you know. So what happened was that um, I called up um, um, Little Blackie and we talked and then we found out and it was confirmed later on that it was true, you know. So um, I don't even know how to even ask this question, but, you know, how was the service you attended that a lot of people share? Uh, if you could fill us in. Well, the services, um, it was actually, a, it was beautiful, you know, a uh, bunch of people showed up. I mean, we had seating there for like 400 people and, and they were they were all filled. They were all filled. So there was people in the back too, just kind of just standing in the back and, uh, and, and, and it, it was nice, you know, it was cool to uh, kind of touch bases with uh, all these faces that you, you come to know when, um, during, uh, you know, Slow's career and stuff, you know, I mean, I did a little something with them too, but uh you know, through it, through his career, it was kind of cool to just start meeting all these people and seeing them, you know, coming by, you know, paying their respects, you know, and showing their love for, uh, for my brother, you know. So, um, yeah, it was it was a pretty cool experience, man. I mean, not a not a good experience, but I mean, it was cool to see all these people just show up and support them, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, for the people that may not know, what is your relationship with Slow? Like, how did you come to know him? Um, you know, fill us in, please. Well, I've been uh, I've been part of the family for uh, 26 years. I'm uh, I'm married to a sister, okay. you know, and that, that that's how I came to to touch bases with him through his sister. You know, uh, I was dating her for a while. You know, we 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 met each other when we were 17, and uh, you know, I didn't even know I I didn't even know that was her brother. You know, in the beginning, you know, what I mean, it, it wasn't like they were marketing them like they were like, oh, you know, I'm I'm sloping sister, or you know, this and that, and. It was just one of those things where she kind of just took me around him. I used to, uh, I took her down. I, I believe he was in Riverside at that time. I'm not sure. But I, I, I took my lady over there to go uh, pick up uh, I don't know, some paperwork or something. Maybe maybe his, his daughter or something. And because uh, my wife used to take care of his daughter, you know, babysit his daughter and stuff. So um, we went out there and uh, she introduced me to him while we were in his apartment. You know what I mean? And, and she introduced him as slow and stuff. So, I mean. It kind of clicked on me. I was just like, "Oh, slow, okay." So I heard of this this dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I think back then uh, he had some some music going on with some uh, some uh, what Bugsy, I believe Bugsy, and uh, that was his compa. That was his compadre. So he had something going on with them, and that's how I I knew his name. You know? Okay. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how I actually met him. Uh, uh, Ron, what year was this? Would you say? Shoot, bro. To be honest with you, if you had a guess, man. This was a, uh, this was a long time, and this is probably like a uh, nineteen ninety eight, maybe. Okay. So, somewhere like that, ninety eight, ninety seven. I'm thinking. Yeah, and that was around the time that I finally met him. Uh, yeah. um, we're gonna play some songs later on. Um, when we go to break, I want people to reflect on his music. You know, right that on. his voice continues to live on. Hopefully, people share this. So they can hear these stories, you yeah, know, yeah. and how this man uh, touched our lives, not only through his music, but as family and, and friends Definitely, as well, yeah. you know. But um, yeah, I had I had an opportunity to produce for him, work with him. Cool dude. He's always laughing. He was always up. I've never uh -huh. seen him. Uh, um, I mean, I'm sure other people have other stories about him, but I've never seen him down. He was always like... Uh, amped. He was always hyped. Oh yeah, he was definitely you know? hyped most so, of the time. Yeah. So um, you met him. Uh, how did you end up getting close to him, as as in working with him, or uh, as far as the music is concerned? Well, the way I mean, I, I was at the pads. Um, I mean, uh, what I remember is just like you know, uh, my mom pretty much uh, she she kind of just got tired of like mine and my sister's bullshit back in the day. <laughs> So um, yeah. she kind of just bounced on us and left us in an apartment and stuff. So, um, you know, at the time I was dating her and stuff, and 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 we grew we grew uh, real close. So she uh, she opened up the doors, man. You know, I had no I had nowhere to go. So she kind of opened up the doors for me and stuff. And uh, you know, her mom was like kind of tripping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, but um, they welcomed me. You know what I mean? And I, I was still I was kind of just tucked away in that room, bro, because I was like I was embarrassed, bro. You know what I mean? I I have shit. 
You know what right. I'm saying? So um, I was just tucked in that room for a while, and then little by little, I just started establishing this uh, relationship with them. You know what I mean? And and you know they 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 took note that um that uh, I was gonna I was gonna be there. You know for a while. Right. You know what I mean? Our relationship start, started getting serious. So. Uh, he just uh, after a while see me there he just kind of like you know what i mean started like hey man let's go here let's go to the racetrack or let's do because that dude love horses you know what i mean yeah. he, he loved going to sanity racetrack and you know do, you know bet on games and all that stuff you know and so he's just take me little by little to these places and then uh slowly but surely i just i, I was his company you know what i mean every time i went to the studio when he was going to uh, tony g studio in el monte right there and uh you know he just he started taking me around these cats and now that that's right around the time when i I just started dreaming, you know what I mean? I was like, I mean, it, it, this probably wasn't no like a $5 million studio or, or like something huge like that. But to me, that shit was like- Everything. Ev yeah, it was It was everything. It was, a, it was a good experience. It was something new. So I started, you know, just dreaming amongst myself, you know, hopefully one day, you know, I'll do I'll do something. That was just me in the back, you know, at the time. And, and that's how pretty much I clicked up with him. And then, I mean, and years to come, and years to come, he just um, finally just threw me on. You know, I used to just write rhymes in the background. You know, what I mean, as they were as they were rapping in the booth or whatever, I'm just like writing to myself because I was vibing. You know, I was feeling that vibe, and I was like, you know what? I don't care. I'll save all these rhymes. You know, what I mean, it's just it's just something that for me to remember. You know, what I mean, something that I did right there while they were doing their thing. And, and sure enough, man, one day he just you know he he let me uh he let me you know. Do, do my thing and stuff and yeah it was just that much more of a dream you know when, when, when you did your thing and what was his response to you like like uh, when he heard nah it, it was positive he was, he was happy he, you could see he was happy about it in a sense and he was probably thinking man this motherfucker <laughs> he, he, he got down he came with it or whatever but you know he, he, he liked my voice yeah he liked my voice so I just I, I went with it and I mean my rhymes too I mean for for me being just like a, a newcomer to you know my rhymes were kind of on point because uh, it, it wasn't like I was into like um how, how could I say like Chicano rap so much uh -huh. I, I, I was listening to uh, I was listening to like the loonies you know what I mean uh, uh Operation Stackola fucking what Southern Playlist they had like music that's a, the outcast <laughs> Um, I was listening to Wu-Tang back in the day, like, I, I, I was listening to a bunch of that stuff, you know what I mean? Right, so, right. I guess that, that that's how some of my flow was just kind of different, a little yeah. different from the other ones, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I grew up in the streets, so um, I kind of meshed it a little bit with a little bit of this and that, and it kind of... Well, that's kinda, what made your yeah, style. Yeah, that's that's what gave me my, my own personality, I guess. Yeah, that's so dope. Like, yeah. So, Obviously, he put the stamp of approval on it. Oh uh, yeah, he definitely. If, it, if if he didn't like it, it wasn't going on. Mm -hmm. It wasn't going on. But um, for the most part, he didn't. He never disapproved of a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know, when it came for me to write my stuff, or sometimes I'll just pull up on him. You know, we weren't even doing nothing. I say, hey, look at this. I just wrote this. What you think, real quick? You know, he'd be all right. All right, okay. that's good. Not say too much, but he'd just be like, oh, all right, that's cool. Okay, that's good. What about when it finally came to perform with him? How did that go for you? Uh, well, I started doing like just ad libbing for the group, you know what I mean? Okay. And uh, I guess that, that kind of broke me in a little bit, you know what I mean? But uh, throughout that whole time, I mean, don't get, I was a nervous cat, you know what I mean? I was just, I'm not good with rejection, you know? Never right. have been or whatever, you know? So there was just being in front of a lot of people just kind of, it, it made me nervous. I knew I had to perform. I knew I, I had to get these words right, you know? I had to, I just, I didn't want to look like the oddball, you know what I mean? Right. So, um, I mean... It, little by little, it worked out. It worked okay. out. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that he's like horses that he yeah. to, you know go to the Santa Anita horse track races. What is one thing? I mean, I didn't know that. Okay, about him. You know, um, what is one thing that you being so close to him and knowing him so well about him that you can share that maybe most people don't know about about him? Is there anything that comes to mind that there's something about him that you know that? You know, most people didn't know. Like, you could have said that about the horses, but I think I've actually even heard that. People told me that he was really into, like, horses. So, and I mean, I, we know that he was a Raiders fan. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Die hard. I, I went to, like, two two Raider uh, Raider games with him and stuff, and that was, like, you know, that was, like, kind of, like, after we did that womp womp, you know, the Raiders for Life and stuff. And and we weren't the only ones bumping that shit. We had a DJ, like, a DJ speaker there with a, a big receiver or whatever. 
we were just man he had his dad there on one one occasion he had his dad there really? yeah so his dad went with us and um it was a pretty cool experience man it just it it, it 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 was nice it was a good feeling to feel that you know you got your family right there and y'all just mashing with each other you know mobbing it, okay. was, good. it was good now i guess to to add to my question okay we see him on stage we see him in videos we hear his songs we've heard the songs on the radio um, what is one thing that you can say that maybe people don't know about him, but in private you do? Like, what is he like in private when he's not on stage, when he's not in the studio? Is he a quiet guy? Um, th th what is it like to watch? Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, most of the time, I mean, his, in, in, his pri in, in the house, he was just like, he's in the sports, you know what I mean? Basically, okay. he's just in the sports, he loved playing cards. You know what I mean? World Series of Poker. You always watch that shit. Oh, see, yeah, see, I was, watched that too. Yeah, bro, he was he was definitely into. He was a gambling man. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, he wasn't one of those dudes that needed help and stuff like that. But he definitely, if he had a chunk of money, you best believe he was gonna go try to flip that real quick. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he he was always reading the what is it the form racing forms and stuff. Yeah. Uh, every damn day. Every I mean, if there's a race um, coming up next week. He he look at the forms. He he study them. You know what I mean? The length of the horse, how how far it went, and when did he speed up when he hit the third corner? I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's he just studied everything. Anything he did, he really studied. He he did a lot of homework on song. I mean, that's one of the biggest things that I remember about him. You know, aside from just loving to go eat food and shit, just like all of us do. Yeah. I mean, he had his spots for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. I mean, you know what I mean? That's what he loved doing, you know? This might be a weird question. What kind of food did he like? Was he a big Mexican dude? Uh, 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 mariscos, you know? Uh, no mariscos. Okay. Nah, he, he ain't no, don't put no oysters in front of his face or none of that. No? He, nah, he, he's a definitely Mexican Mexican food type guy. Okay, like chile verde, arroz, frijoles. Chile verde, chile verde arroz, frijoles, all that. Um, he used to like a lot of breakfast too. You know what okay. I mean? Like that diner type breakfast, your like toast. Like a big yeah. meal. Yeah, yeah, he used to love that stuff, man. They, yeah. they all loved it. The whole family's in the breakfast, bro. <laughs> you catch them in the late afternoon eating breakfast, you know? So Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bre bre breakfast, for, breakfast for dinner, breakfast and, for lunch? And man, yeah, twice, three times a day, who knows? Yes. I mean, he was a trip, though. Sometimes he would, like, like it's a trip. If, if he's eating, like, a carne asada burrito, and a lot of people don't really know this, and, I mean, it ain't, it ain't crazy, but, I mean, some people do it. He would, like, have, like, a little cup of ice cream and shit on the side you know what i mean well while he's eating a burrito or whatever yeah he'd either have a donut or a cup of ice cream on the side and a lot of people never knew that shit it was kind of weird you know what i mean it was a little weird but that, that's that's what he used to do you know wow. i remember that a lot you know wow i remember this other rapper i won't mention he used to always big have a big meal and then have a honey bun remember those honey buns yeah he would yeah. warm it up he would eat like i don't know um Meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and corn all in the same spoon, and then turn around and bite the sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what boy. that reminded me of. Bro. Yeah, boy. You know. That was him. Now, I know the last time we spoke, um, and I'm just going to say this now because people have asked me, why didn't the slow pain interview ever happen? Uh, a break on it, I think I even shared this with uh, Little Blackie, that um, I have text messages and DMs where we were back and forth. I know he had told me that he had lost his job due to COVID. He started an, another job and that his uh, schedule wasn't allowing him. He even told me about his personal life. How his, uh, I believe his wife had, had just got out of the hospital. So he had a lot going on. So we actually had two dates that were actually supposed to ha had happened already. And as the dates got closer, I would call him up. We're going to do it. We're going to have to push it back a little bit. I said, okay. And um, I said, by when he goes, can you give me another month? I just started this new job. Uh, I got to make sure I'm there first. You know, I, I'm, I get in good and then I'll let you know. I said, okay. So I would say it was about two weeks before he passed was our last text. And then one week before he passed when I just said, hey, I was still good on that date. And I never heard back from him. So that's what happened. You know, yeah. because, you know, I get people that ask me, how come this didn't happen? Well, that's what happened. Yeah. You know, the man had, had a family. Yeah. You know, he had other priorities. And I always say family first. Yes. So take take care of that. You know what I'm saying? Take care of that. Now, I know he coached for many, many years. Can you shed a little bit of light on? Because I know he shared with me the championship that he won. Like how he coached baseball and how he loved baseball and, you know, all of these oh, things. Yeah. You there, know. there was a, there's a lot of chance. He did a, he did a lot of travel ball, you know, so okay. I just working at, at the schools and stuff. 
So um, I mean, it, it's uh, I don't exactly don't know know the names, but there's quite a few names that uh, that he he taught he trained and taught these kids. You know, what I mean, and some of them actually made it to the to, to the majors. You know. Really? And yeah, and and uh, some of them actually even. I mean, he he had a relationship with them still, so some of these guys were actually supposed to come back and and, uh, and show their face at, at you know at his batting cages that he just opened up and stuff. And uh, you know that that they're obviously thought of ment you know just mm -hmm. they're all ment mentors. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, they they all had a big influence on the kids, and all these kids know all these. I mean, I don't I don't know I don't know these sports guys. You know, I'm not into sports too much. You know, I mm -hmm. like I love the games, but you know, as far as, uh, you know, studying the game and knowing which players came from where and when did they injure their, their, their kneecaps or their ankles or whatever, you know, I just, I, I was never that cat, you know, the little sports that I did know was because, uh, I mean, I was around them most of the time and you can't change the TV when this about to watch your TV, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I mean, right. right. Uh, yeah, he, he, he taught, a, he taught quite a, quite a few kids, man, quite a, and they're doing, they're do, doing do pretty well. Do you remember around how many years he coached baseball? Shoot. How many years, man? It's it's been at least over a dime, at least over yeah, over, yeah over ten. I years. believe he told me at least ten. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, I believe it was around that. And he told me how many championships that he had won. And I told him like this, dude. Not only are we gonna talk about music, but I want to talk about that oh, no, because yeah. not only the impact that you made in music, but also the impact that you had in, in these kids' lives. He touched you know? a lot. He touched a lot of youth, man. A lot yeah. of youth, and that that's a. You know, um, that's one thing that I actually, I, I, I respect them a lot for just that, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of troubled youth out there, but, you know, um, obviously these kids, a lot of these kids had good parenting, you know, behind them, you know what I mean? A good support system, right. you know, as soon as, uh, as soon as they got a hold of Larry and they put their kids there, man, it was, it was all over, man. Their kids were, were actually learning how to focus on the game a little more, what to look out for, how to, how to look out, you know, not just stretches or you're just training this guy. He actually had a technique because he, he studied the game, you know, he, he knew where the power was coming from, you know, from the legs, from the waist, from your, you know, your upper torso, wherever, you know, right. he, he, he had a good technique and knew. He, he knew he knew his way around sports. He knew how to make winners. Yes, definitely. He knew how to coach winners. Definitely. And, and his uh, his, if you will, his um, training methods, his championships, all showed it. Because when yes. he started sharing all these things, uh, I thought it was a big deal. I said, "Dude, we got to talk about this when you come, man." And he no, was like, yeah. "Okay, okay." I said, "I just don't want to talk about music, bro." I said, "We can just go on; it doesn't matter." Mm -hmm. But I definitely want to talk about this because I do believe you impacted people's lives, and to be able to win, you know, and these kids win, uh, these are these are things that will last a lifetime for a lot of these kids. Oh yeah, you know, no, no, no. You teach them how to get over their fears, you know, right. basically, you know. What I mean, you just don't deal with with the anxieties of performance, but you know what I mean? It, it, being out there on the field, these kids have to perform too on a whole nother level, you know? And and yeah, he, he, he made them courageous, you know? A lot of these kids, you know, just didn't have it in them, you know, just like he helped me, you know what I mean? He kind of ment mentored me through my through my anxieties, you know, when I had to perform or whatever and yeah. stuff like that. So, I mean, he did he did um, extend his hand to a lot of children, man. And, and, and these kids, some of them are men already and stuff. And, and you know, that they're, they're respectful guys, you know? and Right. Yeah, he did a lot, man. You know, uh, I know he had mentioned to me, he never went in, into depth. And I know as we go along and we talk to others that are here that want to share, maybe you could shed a little bit of light um, because I don't know, and I'm sure the public doesn't know. Um, I know he had told me that he was in and out of the hospital. He had been sick. And at one point he actually almost even died, he said. Yeah, and I, I believe he, he beat that. Was his death unexpected? Meaning, um, like, everything was fine and then all of a sudden he just passed? Or was he was he going through complications at the time that it just led up to his passing? Well, it, it was very much so une unexpected. Definitely unexpected. Uh, uh -huh. He he did uh, have complications. I mean, he had heart surgery before. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, and I don't know exactly the process, but they had to burn like um, they did. Uh, they burned some nerves because he had a, a like a weird rhythm, you know. And uh, he was dealing with that for like a long time. And it, it's almost like some of his anxieties were contributed to that, you know. And uh, he finally figured out what it was, and he went he he went under, and they did surgery, and they fixed that problem and stuff. And uh, the thing with uh the whole complications at first uh, the uh, the doctors told him that he had a bad liver you know mm -hmm. he had like stage four uh cirrhosis of the liver and stuff and 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 
and there was no help at that point, you know what I mean? But but that wasn't the case, bro. You know, cuz this last this last time, you know, when um you know, when he made it in the hospital for for these complications or whatever, he actually uh he actually thought he was uh he had covid for a while, bro, you know? Mm-hmm. Cuz he just couldn't understand, you know, uh, uh, like how tired he was and he just he just he didn't feel normal, you know what I mean? So he kind of put himself in quarantine, you know what I mean? And you know, he'd talk to his kids through a tablet and stuff. He'd stay in his room and stuff like that because he just couldn't understand what was going on and stuff. And uh, right. so he did that. And uh, when uh, when he finally came to the point where uh, he needed some real help and stuff, they had a, you know, a, they called the ambulance and stuff. And, um, you know, some of those guys were pricks, you know what I mean? Because uh, they, they get there and they make assumptions, you know, they don't understand what's going on. I don't right. know. If they're in fear, because they probably he probably did have COVID or whatever they're thinking, you know. But you know, they I hear they were acting like pricks with them and stuff. But uh, you know, they um, did a couple tests and and they finally just uh, kind of took him to the hospital and stuff. I believe it was uh, either the next day or I don't remember. But um, yeah, they took him to the hospital and they ran these tests. You know, they ran the COVID test on him and uh, that that first test came back negative. You know, mm-hmm. and. Uh, and they were still like wondering, well, why this guy, why is he going through this shit? So they kind of did a blood test on him as well, you know. And uh, they, I guess the body, the body is supposed to have the, these levels of, I don't know, white T-cells or the red cells. I don't mm-hmm. know, they were fighting each other. But the body has to have this certain amount of, uh, this level, this reading. It's like about 170, 175 uh-huh. to 200. So when they did, the, they ran the tests on him, come to find out that dude was a nine. So obviously, hit, at that point, his 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 blood was like poison, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, they 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 try to put him under, you know what I mean? They try to put him under, and um, so it could work on his body, so that the engine don't like, you know, overheat or whatever, you know what I mean? Because his kidneys were just done. Was, he was losing them, so um, um, they did that, and as they they like inserted a tube down his throat, it wasn't like the normal big ones that they used to to be, but it, it was like a smaller tube, but they. They inserted it in his his I believe it was his vital signs or or some 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 type of levels that they were paying attention to that dropped. Wow. And and those were that was like another indication that it might have might have been COVID. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So they went ahead and they tested him again. You know what I mean? They did another ran another test on him and sure enough it came back and it wasn't you know it wasn't COVID again. So they kept running those tests and they kept running they 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 ran them three times bro all three times it just came back negative. And come to find out that uh, the dude was uh, was um, <clears throat> Spencer. It's okay, bro. Take your time. Um, come to find out, he was uh, he had full blown leukemia. Um, so. Um, you know, that shit came back and we were like, wow, you know, um, doctor said, you know, this had nothing to do with his liver. His liver's not even, the doctor said that it was, you know, stage four, whatever. And, yeah. uh, it wasn't, let's say 75% of his liver was mom, still good, you know? So that wasn't the problem there. So, you know, we went off thinking like, damn, what's wrong with these, these dudes, you know, giving false information and stuff. And, right. and um, yeah, that's how how we know the doctor said that uh, it only takes like around three months for uh, for um, leukemia to just go full blown, and you know um, they they put them under and uh, like not even when they when they called us on the phone they told them they were gonna put a put them under so they could work on them. Not even like twenty minutes they called back and uh, we were we were like huddled like huddled like a like a football team would you know inside the living room you know in prayer and you know. Um, they, they just they told us that they started giving him compressions and stuff you know mm. and um you know he was trying to respond or whatever but uh um they couldn't bring him back bro yeah so yeah that's pretty much what uh what happened there you know well i want to say first of all my prayers and my condolences to the family to you and to those that those that loved him you know, saw him as a friend, saw him as a brother, family member, etc. So we pray for you because, you know, even though he'll be loved and missed, you know, we still go through it here, you know. Yeah. Um, so I'm thankful that he's resting now. Um, if I were to ask you one last question, 
what is one thing that you'll always remember him for, if anything? Um, maybe he might have, you know, you guys might have might have had a moment. Uh, maybe you know, what's what's something if somebody were to ask you, what can you tell me about slow pain? Just his jokes, man. He did. There's not one 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 moment where he wouldn't either bag on you because he loved you or bag on you because he just didn't take a liking to you. You know what I mean? But um, that that dude had like. He had some jokes, man. He had some fire. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, he had some fire. Yeah. Uh, hey, sense of humor is great. I yeah. love I love people with sense of humor. So. Definitely. Okay, brother, listen, we're gonna go ahead and uh play some of his music. We're gonna reminisce and we'll come back. So I wanna thank you for coming and sharing with us, man. Thank you. I greatly appreciate it. So thank you, Tony. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Johnny. We'll be back in ten minutes. Yo, what's up? This is slow pain. Lil Savage, we right here in the studio, just got through recording the, uh, I remember the single, uh, we sitting here about to do the final mix, um, it's going down, you know, I'm, I put all my time and effort into this, I think this is my best album ever, so if you guys check it out, I remember, Lil OG, if you want it, got some heat on there, uh, my homeboy Sal Capone, my cousin Lil Demon, the homeboy Bandit, uh, it's going down. Check it out. That's how we doing it over here. Old Town Mafia. Cool. Let me turn back the hands of time. Just a little bit like to 89. Tony G was on K-Day. And everything was so gravy. I remember playing shoot 'em up, bang, bang on the old side. Doing my thing, make tapes all day by Tony Ye. Back then, ghetto blast and rewind it, play. Back, y'all.
Palm Peak, slow pain, Mr. Baby OG, slang a key on a D-Lo, my Steelo, pushing kilos, piss gas on my P.O., want the homie Dio, shit sound good, California drunk in the hood, Mexicano, Gambino, betting G's with my west side Chino, gambling like casino, on the 10th freeway to Pomona, sipping Coronas, eastbound to Arizona, Frost got Phoenix, sold up, showing up, so rough, so tough, blowing up, hold up, wait a minute, minute, let me put my money, make it pit rap in it, Slipping and sliding, getting high, smoking Hawaii, so we fly, who buying? Daddy Frost put it down for the Rasa. So get Vasa, who got game like I do. Eastside Rondon, part two. Every day's another hustle in the city. Shooting crafts with the homies, fall with Big ballers holding down the chronic sack. Puffing on the lanyard in the frosty lap. I saw that shot coming on the microphone. With the lawless click, Mr. G ain't come I'm in the zone, sipping cold Alizé. I parlay, thanking God that I made it through another day. A mighty suit with a cell phone. Brown tone, blue jeans, Versace cologne. This is out to you, wanna be player, boots. Recognize game from an OG stage. Yes. Down like a real G should. It's all good. Represent gangland Southern Cali. Bumping this shit from LA to the valley. Point blank status. Who the baddest? And the hardest. It's the lawless. Shot callers. Putting it down cause we know hell. 90744. The locale. West riding all day. Every day. Y'all about getting paid. What you say? Here's to you. Play your haters. Self shakers. You can't fade the money makers. Slinging this shit. Call me the dope dealer. And make a killing. Like a cat pillar. To make a million, you know the feeling all day stacking, making it happen. Get some, get some. 
Y'all yeah. busters better recognize yeah. it's a Mexican thing. G spot for life. What? See, it's all about the homie love. True gangsta love. California thug shit. And when we ride, homie, see, we both thick. G's up, hoes down, tree eye, yeah. Little black and flossed out. Pimp down, even if fly bitches, they getting tossed out. G fellas in the back, don't act up. Make the wrong move, levels get smacked up. Throwing up the E, sipping on juice. Break bread, chop it up like Bruce. It's about to be cracking, popping. Make no stopping, six four hopping. Pick rolling in around, little black. It's slow pain, taking over this rap game. Homie, yeah. yeah. We was just out for fun. We some gangsters and we on the run. Rolling, sit down for day one, 2000, never be the man job, don't stop, we got the calm one, ha <laughs> ha, G-Battle, no blacks, it's the haps on the craps, ho, B-I, yitch! Welcome back, everyone, to Rodeo Radio, episode 97. And uh, we're not going to waste any time. We're going to go ahead and jump right into my next guest. Uh, we are honoring Slow Pain. We are dedicating this show to his memory. May his voice, may his name live on forever. And without further ado, allow me to introduce Dolly Girl. What's up, Tony? Thank you for having me back. You know what? <clears throat> I've been wanting you back, but you know what? <laughs> I know we talked a couple of times, but you know what? Eventually, we'll get back to your music. For sure. But... Um, how did you come to know, or when did you first meet Sloping? It's uh, it's crazy because uh, I always feel Sloping is the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing today. Um, when I started listening to Chicano rap, I started listening to Slow and all his music. I was I was a huge fan, big fan. Um, I never got a chance to actually go see him, you know, because I was in the middle of getting my own crazy, still getting into trouble, whatever. So I never got a chance to go see him, but I always was a fan. And then one day. Uh, the homie Johnny Yu had a. I don't need to go back. I would. I skipped too far. Too hard ahead. Uh, one of his uh, homegirls. Uh, she. I guess she. You know, worked with them and did stuff with them and book shows. And she's just like, hey, let's go to the studio. Got some friends. You know, come check them out. Cause I was rapping already, but I was still pretty brand new. I didn't know. The, I didn't know anything. I was still trying to put things together. So I was alright. Let's go. So we ended up going to the, uh, one of the homies' houses. I think it was some um, Kofina. So we walk in, and the first person I see was slow. Oh, man, I was just like, I was struck. I was just like, I can't believe like I'm here with them, you know? And cool that night, they recorded, so I got to sit down on a session. And I still didn't even talk to them or nothing. I just, I was like literally just stuck quiet. I just sat there through a session, and I just watched them do their thing. And then after that, they just started um, playing cards, and we used to there all night. And it wasn't maybe about close to 2, 3 in the morning when I was able to kind of like broke in and, you know, told me, hey, man, like, I'm a fan, like, this is so dope, you know, and, and like, right off the bat, like, so I would say, like, he didn't even know me, and he just started cracking jokes about me, what I'm trying to do, and he was just putting me on blast over there, everybody right there, but it was cool, like, I, at that moment, I didn't even care, because I was such a fan, and I thought he was cool people, and um, that was a really dope night, I've never forgot that night, that was, like, really, really cool, and just being there, I literally got more motivated to start rapping. Uh, about how long would you say, or if you could give us a year, uh, when do you think this took place? I want to say that was probably like in, I could be wrong, but I want to say maybe it was about 2003, okay. 2002, yeah, 2003, way back then. <clears throat> and um, so then, so, so the homegirl kept taking me to a couple of their shows and stuff like that. And then I got an opportunity to go actually to Arizona with them, on, on the road with them. And that was a pretty crazy occasion too because it was just I, I got to meet the whole the whole mafia you know and that was even a bigger wow because sal was there little dean was there big bandit and uh i met uh, also through there i met the homie do do busy that was always with them and um it was cool it was just cool like vibing with them and and then when i got a chance to sit there and start selling the merchandise like that was just 
dope. Like just watching all of them and talking to Slow and helping them just get rid of the merch and stuff like that. Like it was just, I felt, I felt like I was, a, I wasn't part of their team, but I felt like I wasn't part of their team because just being a big fan, of, you know, being there. And then uh, I got to go to the this dope show they had in uh, Las Vegas, the Psycho Realm show. And on that time, I was already talking to Slow a little bit more, so. He was just telling me I already remember that time. Like, hey, you know, why don't you do something with this, you know? Or, you know, and I was like, oh, I don't see, you know. I wasn't too sure. I, I mean, I was motivated, but I just didn't know which way, what direction to go. Because I just, I never left the hood or nothing like that. All I knew was the hood and just barely started to see what they were doing. Um, it wasn't until right about that time, I think. I don't want to get my dates wrong, but I don't. Um, the homie Dobizi had introduced myself uh to Johnny Yu and Johnny Yu did um I think it was uh what's the name of the song? I think it was OG Love. Mm -hmm. And he had a record release and um I performed there and all the guys were there and stuff. So we uh I was able to connect more with people there and stuff. And Johnny Yu had signed me and by that time um my fan base grew a little more and I was able to talk too slow and tell him that, you know, Johnny's going to put me on. And, John, and so I was like, oh, that's dope. Because, you know, Slow had put out one of Johnny Yu's album too. So I just told him, like, I, I just don't know which direction to go with it or what I'm going to do with it. And he told me, you know, he, gained, he started, he literally talked to me like, how can I say, not like a, not like, a, how can I say, like, just like a big homie. Like, he really uh -huh. schooled me. He schooled me. There we go. He schooled me on the ropes. Uh, he didn't talk to me, like, very nicely. He was, like, real strict like that. He was like, you know, if you're going to do this, don't waste no one's time. Don't don't waste your time. Like, you got some good people there. You need to take advantage of it. You need to, you know, jump on it. And I told him that Tony G was going to also help me out. And he's like, there you go. You know, do that. Do listen to him. Do what he's got to do. You know what I mean? Um, just... Putting the ropes and everything, and, yeah. and that definitely expanded my mind more. And I was like really grateful, just thankful that I was able to have that little time with him for him to like, you know, you know, get pump me up more, you know, school me right and put me in the direction where I need to go. I needed like that that firmness, and then he definitely put that there for me. And I got going on the first album, which went fantastic. And then uh, I ended up his homegirl ended up hooking me up with a, an album deal that we did called "I Got Your Back." And when we did this, I got back, I reunited with him again. And there's a song in there called Soldier Boy. And uh, he wrote that song. So that was just even more like dope. The fact that I was going to spit a song that was written by him. So he came to the studio with us. And we came up with the concept. He wrote the song down. He was there when we recorded it. He guided me to it, how to spit it, how to deliver it. Just And it was, so it was awesome just to be able to now at this point be more closer to him and him guiding me there when I was recording and putting everything together and especially the song that he wrote right. like that that was just right. that was amazing that was really amazing and there was times where where we did have down moments when we just like arrived to hotels and stuff like that and he was there with us and he would talk to me you know like he would always he would always like talk to me like real firm and and and, and I took that really serious especially coming from him and, you know, and like you said, he did crack jokes about it too. And he would walk away. He would say something smart. He would walk away. And I'd be like, damn, you know, like, like I got wanted upset him or something, you know. But I didn't. He was cool. He came back. He knew what's up. And, and, and just the fact that there was moments also where where we still would like still kind of get to know him. I mean, he trusted me with a lot of things. And that was dope. And he was such a good, he was such a good um, mentor. He, he, he definitely laid everything down how it needed to be. And just the fact being there, watching them, observing and learning the ropes and being to deliver and do what I got to do this day is a blessing. Like, it's literally a blessing. Like, I always, like, I knew there's no way I could have been here if it wasn't for all of them and, you know, and where I am today. Because I learned a lot from all of them, yeah. you know, especially from Slow, because he was, the, like, one of the main ones that I looked up to. But, yeah. yeah. You know, when you told me that the way he spoke to you, he was very direct. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that with this new generation of rappers, we need more people like that. Mm -hmm. a, a lot more a lot people. A lot more people. And um, a lot of us aren't speaking like that to them for fear of maybe offending them, you know. And uh, that's why you see a lot of younger generation rappers, and not just Chicano, just in general. Right. Uh, that's what, they take shots at legends. They do. Know? They do, you know, yeah. and and well, I don't know if that's what they call today clout chasing or whatnot, 
maybe because I dissed the legend, let me go ahead and get no notice. But that legend, like a slow pain, didn't get there by taking shots at anybody. He built he built his own empire on his own. Mm -hmm. You know, and for somebody to take a shot, possibly like a, at him or at somebody else, you know, you know, it's kind of like I'm not gonna give this guy any any um, fame, but there, there was a little kid that this Tupac and Tupac's been dead. Mm -hmm. You know, he said that something like Tupac's music was boring, Tupac's music is irrelevant or whatnot. Then this kid goes and performs somewhere, and they made sure they didn't perform because the fans didn't, they didn't want that. They didn't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I do believe that the way he spoke to you, not that I think he was trying to be mean, but maybe you needed that in that point of your oh, life. Yeah. No, yeah. definitely. And I think I got a good, uh, uh, honestly, I, I got a good vibe like that from all of them. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, it was always like that with all of them. But that's because they knew what's up. They, they were always on the road. They, you know, they were was slow. They, you know, they were all working together. So, because, you know, I did a song with Sal Capone on my first album. You know what I mean? And just his flow, the way it, it came all the time. Like, I paid attention to that. And I had knew that I had to match that when I did that song with him. Uh, there was a time when I sat down with Big Band and work on some music, and he schooled me too on how he sees things and how if I'm gonna do this, I need to do it right. You know, like they all they were all. But even Seven, when I worked with Seven, he with the music, the beats, he's always just like very direct. You know, um, I never got a chance to work with Lil Demi, but when I do, when I did talk to him back then, like it, you know, he 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 was cool. He was cool, but he's just very very direct, very like. Constantly, they know what they got to do and they, they just got to do it and I think I picked up a lot of schooling from all of them and I like where I'm at today because I know I am because of all of them and because I learned and because also you know I, I was able to be put on, on a good platform where I had an amazing single come out yeah. I had you know good backing at that time and and I am here now and I just didn't stop and Literally, what keeps me going to this day is Old Town Mafia, like all of them. Every little piece of all of them always get me pushing and going. That's why I don't give up. And uh, the whole Chicano rap music, like, that's just me. You know, I feel it. I, that's where I came from. Even though my beats might change or, you know, whatever, like, I'm still old school and I still deliver who I am and where I came from. You know what I mean? And just keep pushing. Like, you know, and you look at him. He Just the fact when I found out that he was coming back. And, I, and the good thing is, like, I got to speak to him. Luckily, like right at the end of August, uh, I got to speak to him really quick. And that was like so cool because I was like, what? Slow this use. He's like, yeah, it's me, sis. And I was like, oh, that's so dope. Like you're recording again. He's like, yup. And I'm like, I already know everybody's hitting your features. He goes, I got a gang of features. He's all, but I was like, as much as I would like to jump on all of them, he's like, I need to, I need to take this one slow. He said, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you do. I'm like, you're going to kill him. He's like, yeah, thanks, sis. And and I was just like, I can't wait to hear it. And that literally motivated me 10 times more. Because I said, homie, as soon as you're done and you got some room from home, girl, get me in. I'm like, I need to do this. We need to work one more time. He's like, you know, I got you. So I was like, cool. And so I that just motivated me a whole lot more. And then, like I said, unfortunately, I hate that. I really don't like that. It's just things like this usually we find each other again or, you know, whatever it is, what it is. That's just, you know, we get united like that sometimes, but just seeing everybody again and the fact that he was happy that I was still doing the damn thing. Like he said, he's like, I'm, oh, you're doing the damn thing. Like, that's good. I see that. Like that literally just pushed me out a lot more. So I'm definitely going to put another album out next year okay. for that guy. Just, I'm definitely going to put a memory of him in that yeah. one because that's, it kept me going. Yeah. Um, when you guys spoke, the last time did his health ever come up at all no he just said i just don't know how you feeling he's like he's like i'm trying to take care of my health he's i'm taking care of my family he's like you know trying to do this so he's you know he had things going like you said he had things going on on the middle but he said he and then I, he said uh, actually he said i got my family my health and doing this album but i'm doing great so i like that fact that he had that positive momentum yeah. that he, you know no matter everything he was doing going through that he still was yeah. doing good you know, and I'm thankful because I have rapper friends today that, whether it's black or Chicanos, that we call, I mean, we, we call each other. And you know what we talk about now that we're getting older? Our health. Really? <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's what we talk about. Yeah. About running, going to the gym. Because I just there was a gym that just recently opened up in Orange County. They haven't opened up here in L.A., so I've been driving to Orange County now. Oh, okay. But um, um, we were talking about our health and... Um, eating habits, what do you eat, what do you do? So we just kind of trade that kind of stuff, you know. But um, when we had talked, he did open up about his health. He had told me, I guess, about a, something in the past where it almost killed him. Mm 
Yeah. But but he, he had survived and mm -hmm. uh, said he was doing good. And he was very positive. Yeah. Because he was looking forward to being here. You know, yeah. I, I want to do it. I want to do it. I heard you got everybody on there. And I was like, yeah, okay. You know, whenever you're ready. Okay. But he kept, we kept pushing it back. But um, when you heard of his passing, where were you and how did you hear of it? I was driving home and uh, I got like two phone calls. Um, I didn't... I wasn't. I didn't really believe it because the same thing that you had mentioned about another artist that had happened to him yeah. because of the whole hacking thing. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna wait a little bit. But then um, I I hit up a, a close friend that knows him and his family, and just to make sure. And um, they yeah, they was confirmed at that moment. I just I just really couldn't believe it. Um, I really uh, actually when when I mean I was besides being like you know feeling down and, and sad, I was very happy. Because I was happy that I got to talk to him one more time. Because it went so many years that I didn't get to hear from him. And the only, and, and the only reason, the only thing that I remember was how much he wanted a son. Because he had three daughters. And how much he wanted a son so bad. And when he had his son, it was like, bye. <laughs> you know, it was like, bye. And he, you know, he was, you know, he was always, he always talked about his daughters and his family all the time. But it was like something about when he had his son. It's just like that kind of just made him go and just be the whole family man 100. And that's when I heard he was, you know, coaching so I didn't bother him. I didn't even like reach out or anything. So I, there was times when I was doing some music where I wanted to get him on something, but I couldn't get a hold of him. So just the fact that that I got to talk to him just one more time right before all this, unfortunately, that that was a that was an amazing blessing. Right. Yeah, I still still can't believe it, and to me, it's a little harder to believe it because I didn't see him so much. So I still feel his presence. I still feel he's alive, like doing right. his thing somewhere. You know. Yeah. You know, when I spoke to him again, we probably talked maybe 20 minutes. Uh, we started maybe even a little bit longer because we talked about sports. Uh, we talked about his health. We talked about his family. He had brought up his wife, his kids, the teams he coached, how many years. We rarely ever talked about music, but it was uh, a lot about, you know, I'm doing good. I'm in a good place right now. He said that a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And I never asked him, um, are you doing music? Or are you going to do music again? Because my whole thing was... Take care of yourself first. You right, know, right. You know, take care of yourself first. So when I heard of his passing and it was confirmed, um, it really fucked me up mm -hmm. because his whole conversation with me was so positive. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and to hear it so unexpectedly like that, it just really fucked yeah. me up. Oh, you yeah. Know? I didn't expect I, it at all. I laid in bed. I'll, I'll be honest. I laid in bed like all fucking day. And then at night, uh, I just honestly... Uh, I don't recommend this, but I started drinking a little bit. Mm -hmm. So and then I started bumping his mm -hmm. music. And then when I heard that song, I remember where he gave me a shout out. It just like really fucked me up even more, you know. Um, so I I knew I had to do something, you know, when Steviano passed away, I want his name to live on forever. And um, we're doing the same thing for Slow Today. And that's why it's important that we gather together and we share uh, these awesome memories that we share on with anyone who's willing to listen. Yeah. You know, what a yeah. good friend he was. Um, <clears throat> what's one thing? Uh, well, you, you went to the services. Mm -hmm. Did you get a chance to speak? It was beautiful. No, I didn't. I did. I got there like a little bit after because I had to take care, take care of some things after. But I, I did run into a lot of people that I haven't seen in a long time. And then um, just the fact, I, I think I was more, I was really overwhelmed just seeing how many people showed up. That was a lot of love. That was awesome. That was awesome. That was a lot of love. It was, it was very well um, presented like everything was good um i didn't get a chance to go and speak to the family i just i just didn't it was hard it was hard enough being there but i do say that um seeing him there it was it looked like him that was an awesome you know a lot of people sometimes didn't look like themselves and that yeah. looked like him and he looked very peaceful and that was like really awesome just to see that you know that yeah. he was that he looked good like you know and um his daughter hit me up the next day and she told me that she saw me there. She said, thank you. And I told her that um, I had seen her, but I just didn't want to. I just, I couldn't. It was so hard. That was the hard part right. to tell the family, you know. But I told her, you know, my respects, my condolences with everybody. And, I, you know, I really respect and admire your dad a lot. If she ever needed anything, just, you know, go ahead and reach out. And then um, that was that was cool. That meant a lot for me coming from his daughter. And like I said, I'll always, um, as long as I'm doing music, I'm always going to do it knowing that Slow is there giving me that push because that's how I started and that's, I've always had that in my head, always had that in my head, you know. Right. Okay. Um, 
if there's one thing that somebody would ask you one day, say even 20 years from now, somebody says, what was slow like? What's one thing that would pop into your mind right away that you can... I can remember playing, going to casinos all the time. Always casino. I didn't play, but him and his homegirl were always playing. And I was just there watching. <laughs> they were just ordering food and, you know, just dropping, dropping. And we would always go out like to eat there all the time. And like I said, cracking jokes all the time. And... Like, just, just a good time. Always a good time. We were, like, a big crowd. I remember one time uh, uh, when we were in Arizona, we were up to, like, I don't know how many hours, and we are all playing games. We were playing on crabs. They were there, no. <laughs> he was just shaking them and saying, like, all kinds of rhymes and just going great. It was, it was always a good time. I'll always remember, like, always a good time, the guidance, the speeches, and just the hustle and the movement of, of everything was slow. Yeah. Um, what is the one, if I were to say, give me – Possibly one of your favorite or, you know, um, one of the most memorable songs from Slow Pain. What comes to your mind? Oh, the day, the, is it called, uh, I just went black when I think it's called Day, Day, Day the one that's, uh, the one that goes with that girl, um, rolling with the homies, <laughs> riding through my neighborhood. Oh, that one with Nino Brown. I love that song. Yeah. I love that song. Yeah. That song, yeah. I bump that all the time. I was bumping it like every day when, when you pass and I put up the video like a bunch of times on my page and everything. That's, 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 that's song always reminded me And just him always giving shout outs to Rollers Only all the time Because it was always with all of us That's another thing too Just, you know, he always he was always with Rollers Only And he always gave us shout outs in all his songs And he always just showed us love all the time Okay mm -hmm. And um, I know you said there was a lot of people there at the service Did a lot And I asked because I have a, a point to this question um, A lot of rappers show up Honestly, I don't. I don't recall any people I saw there were like little black and little sickle and just the mafia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the reason why I say that because um, I know sometimes you know, and I don't know why people like that don't show up, mm -hmm. but I believe some people like that should be the ones. They to, should be the ones because they they're be. the reason why we they opened up the gates and the reason why we're here and doing what I do. Like you said, I do believe that there should be um some more older homies and OGs schooling and telling these youngsters what's up because it's getting out of hand. I mean, it is what it is. Everybody has their flavor and, and I respect that. I'm not, you know, talking about anybody. And I don't, I don't because... I mean, I got my own thing going on too, but I mean, uh, just like the streets, as long as you got OGs and they're talking to the youngs and they're putting them where they need to be, I think in the rap game would be the same way. You know, you got to hear from the OGs too, so you know what's going on. And there's right. no not that disrespect and all that snitching and all that garbage going on. You know, yeah. like that's definitely me. And I do speak up. I do. That's what I'm. One thing I know and I, and I love about the game, and I think I got that from them is just you know I I I see something, I tell them like yo, you know, like. Fix that or respect yeah. that or change it up a bit because that's not cool. I know you're new and that's good you're here, but you know you, you gotta be you, you gotta yeah. be about it. You know you gotta be about it. You gotta speak about it. You know. Yeah, you know, uh, and and I'm real close to a lot of uh, younger Chicano rappers that call me, and whenever they need advice, you know, I'm there. But I, I tell them, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I will tell you what I would do. Because the last thing yeah, that I, saying, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want you to say. He told me, and this, yeah. and this is what happened. No, this is what I would do. This is what would work for me. And I just be wise in what mm -hmm, you do. Mm -hmm. You know, I had this one guy, youngster, called me, and he told me, "Hey, I'm gonna this so and so, and this and a older." And I said, "Why?" Oh, I just don't like him. Mm. I, I'll tell you what. I said, "Why don't we do this? Why don't I just call him, and you guys can talk by yourselves." And he wanted to. Cause it, well, it's thing. easy. To, it's <laughs> easy to be an internet warrior. Yeah, you know, and and just post up your song and talk, you know. Mm -hmm. But I just told him, you know, that's not the way to go. Mm -hmm. So, but that that's, uh, right. I I try to be upfront. So, but now, um, um, in closing, because our time is running now. For sure. First of all, I want to say thank you for coming, you know, and sharing with us. Yeah, thank um, you. Is there anything else that you care to share about slow? that maybe it might be dear to you or maybe one of your favorite moments great memory that is my the, the main thing that i always remember is just his talks with me and um I, there's been times where i slipped a couple of times and i always need to remember him just just saying hey you know don't waste time stick to what you got to do make it happen you know yeah and, I'm, okay. and that's to everybody when you're really this and whatever with the music or anything you want to do, just just stick to it, stick to it, make it happen. Don't waste your time and just go all out. And I'm pretty sure you know something will will come of it. Right. 
and, and um, you know, um, and I want to speak to those of us that consider themselves OGs, you know. Um, let's mentor some of these new guys because mm -hmm. they do need guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a lot of them possibly don't have a father. But, you know, we, we don't know their background. Right. We don't know where they're coming from. Right. Maybe there's a reason why they are the way they are, you know. But uh, when people reach out for help for me, I try to do as much as I can, but yeah. I'm only one person. Um, I've known youngsters that have tried to reach out to other OGs, and I know who they are, and they, they've told me. They just diss me. So I think sometimes we have to take the blame yep. if we're not willing to help. If we're not willing to help, then don't say nothing. Yeah, and everybody knows who follows me, knows if they reached out to me. I've talked to so many people. I don't even know how I made the time to do all that. But I've talked to many of my followers and my fans, and, I, and I've tried to lead them the best way. And like I said, do the same thing you do. This is my opinion. Make the right decision. Right. Okay. Dollar Girl, thank you very much. Thank you. you know, Appreciate uh, we, 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 uh, You're very welcome. We put up your Instagram. People can reach you. Anybody want to talk to you, we'll talk to me, whatever, we're there. Yeah, get so, in me. We're going to go ahead and reminisce a little bit more. We're going to take a 10-minute break, and we're going to come right back. I believe we're coming up with a video. So That's what's up. 10 minutes. Rest the peace, little pain. Ah. Shining on my low rider. Chrome 13, Big Daddy B. Another Saturday morning, dedicated to the homies, low riding, hitting switches and sliding. It's worldwide, baby. It's going down in the hood, rolling in my fleet hood, hitting switches, rolling with some shh. Three Latin queens, rolling 13s, Big Daddy D's, OG Cali King, slow pain, Nemo Brown, play it, put the Mac down, throw it up. Blue Beard Brown, Alpine, get a bumpin'. Gangsta Ogies, this is dedicated to my low riding homies. West Coast, East Coast, Albuquerque, and Texas. Hit Lick Mafia on my necklace. Big fuel to them riders, smash for life. Rollers on the clip, shaking up the dice. Worldwide, like them suicide dogs on the six foes. Getting rich, though, spitting sick flow. Baby girl, Nessa, you the bomb. I swear to God, if I put it on my mind. was a good day, like you say, get a lick with a whole new rap song, you know how we do it, do it. see that red light on, we smash right through, open that east side anthem, through the neighborhood, through the city, remember that, open in the regal on D's, no tag, with the snake and eagle flag up, homie D getting handcuffed, much love primo, I see you when you get out, Ain't nothing changed with the zeros Hopefully one day I'll be the next Mexican superhero Crease down with my stay season cats Give me daps, keep busting my gangsta raps Rollin' with some badass It's all good, all we love through my neighborhood So the flame spray, 10 G's on the propane Make the freaks like go fang OG like the homie sang Zigzag with no gang Homie times ain't changed It's all the same Same old gangsta thing Same old gangsta gang 25 to life when you ride with pain If you're trying to bang with each side of things Ain't nothing but a gangsta boy Gangsta cholo, the cholas like my homie Force say Some of you don't know what's happening, get boss us Not for you anyway, remember that? Remember that? Getting high on Sunday afternoon Wolf was in the back and they bumping, bumping Six packs, prophylax, hoodie wrap It's all good when you rollin' through my neighborhood
my waist, big blue heart in my chest. AJ is the status and I represent the West. I'm not your average everyday Mac. In fact, I'm just your everyday player. I play the tricks and I sing because it's on. From dusk till dawn, so peak game on the real. G is slow, good to go, but instead we like to chill. So kick back and sit tight. The bones got the fat throat set so we can blaze all night. So could you gladly roll up a fatty and pop Smoking on the humbo and making money by the bundles. Cause we got flow, who you just don't know. We got the bomb. Not just an everyday player. Playing in the game, living like a pimp. Making them dollars. Running game like an OG brother. Not just an everyday player. Playing in the game, living like a pimp. Making them dollars. Running game like an OG brother. I used to run game on little freaks in the hood. Mr. G, guaranteed to break them down, it's all good About to hit the door, about to hook up with slow I got honeys on the line, blazing booze at the Momo The party don't start till after dark, then it's on With no warning, parlay in till the next morning It just don't stop when you know what's popping Capone just dropped and now there ain't no stopping We're all hooked up, g up to a T About to step up and copulate with some honeys Cause tonight, like every night, it's the night we get them panties Like a true West Coast pimp daddy, so don't come me with the rest of them lanes Cause I represent the West in this game Of pimps and playing But I'm not your average In fact is what I'm saying I'm your everyday player Besides the G, falling in the category of P-I-M-P I come sliding in the 83 Rico Moonroof half open, bumping OD smoking Baby loafing in my city seven days a week Got a page for my player Mr. G Got some 213 freaks waiting at the Momo 6 Hitting switches make my low low do tricks I dream of Jimmy sport my beanie real tight Yeah, we gonna party damn All night, 12 o'clock on the dot So we shake the spot, bumping cool in the gangs too West Coast, pimp hitting grand slams every time. With my laid back, big daddy, funky rhyme. I got two lovers and I ain't ashamed. Slow playing, Mr. Booth, just playing the game. the most 
stack Secrets on the way, hot sex and some six packs Who's the poppy on the stage like a pimp Got the miners in the front row coming to my condo What's your name, how you doing, looking nasty I'm rapping to you with my voice that's raspy Ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grind And if you down with it, we gon' do it all night Worldwide players, I thought you knew when the If you ain't down with it, you can skip town with it Baby, gotta jump on it, I know you want it though See, I can tell by the way that you flaunt it, ho Feeling for my fast souls, the gas soul Diamond, ooh, grass soul, then let it go Hell no, cheese up, the mother tricks way down And we clowning when we mobbing through the town In them coupe Cadillacs Latino millionaire Rapping MGM Grand Big dice money Fiend with a mic in my hand We the hit making family They can't handle me Don't get it twisted baby It's just a play in me Welcome back, everyone, to Rodeo Radio episode 97. And once again, we are paying uh, homage, tribute, dedicating this episode to the memory of Slow Pain. May he rest in peace. So with that being said, um, allow me to introduce my next special guest. Without further ado, Big Bandit, Street Mentality, how are you? What's up? What's up, Tom? What's All up, right. man? I'm going to need you to speak a little bit closer, brother. What's going on over here? You know... Um, Let's just jump right into it, brother. Uh, how did you meet Slow? And um, uh, I know you guys were in a group together. Yeah. Uh, uh, how did you guys meet? How did you guys first of all? Well, let's see. Well, I was about high school. It's around uh, maybe 1989, 90, around those areas. I'm barely, um, I'm already known in the city as a, a local rapper that raps at the backyard parties and stuff. I've already witnessed uh, probably some of the favorite DJs like Tony G at the parties. I'm already the rapper now that raps at those parties now where these DJs, the mix masters and 
people that spun at K-Day, like even like yourself, Tony, you know what I'm saying? So um, out there in the scene, ripping, you know, showing your skills, showing what you could do, and as well as the MC, you know? So that was me. And um, I had seen Slow growing up before I even started rapping. I knew who Slow was, you know, that was Larry Patino, you know? We uh, grew up in high school and just in the streets in our neighborhood, two of the names, all of us were together. We would see Slow at the basketball court sometimes because we'd be shooting hoop. They'd show up too, we'd shoot some hoop. Um, he was always good on his feet. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you guys pretty much met growing up high school. Well, yeah, even before though, you know, he was at, you know, he was part of the neighborhood uh, kids that were for like, Becoming from the neighborhood in the area where I grew up, you know what I'm saying? So, um, hanging with the jocks, that was slow, you know, but then, you know, gang, like gang banging, you know what I'm saying? Like hanging with the hoodlums, because yeah. the hoodlums were jocks in high school. So that's just what that was. And then, um, here I am, I'm already rapping through the scene already. And then, um. I hook up with some rappers around me that, you know, they want to. So then we form a group. And then my homie Iceberg was like the neighborhood house so we kicked back at. And he had the little system hooked up where the turntables were popping and we'd be in there smoking mad weed and not giving a fuck. I'd be in there freestyling because I couldn't shut up back in those days because I had a dream. And Slow saw that I was chasing something. so. Um, he told me one time, he was like, man, I used to go and see you at the parties, well, this and that. So to make a long story short, there was about 12 of us in the city of Pico Rivera, and we formed a group called OSBG, One Step Beyond Genius. That was us, a bunch of kids, you know, just trying to rap, trying to, trying to be known. Yeah. And uh, we'd go at it with Southgate, because they'd try to invade our city. But our DJs were bad, and we were bad, too, in our own way. So <clears throat> we had that going on back in those days. Slow would make it a, an issue for us to show up. You know, let's show up. Let's, you know, let's, let's show what we got. Let's, let's show them what we got. And then uh, we formed a, we weeded out everybody, formed a smaller group called LCD, Latin's Causing Damage. And um, we started doing shows at, at car shows and stuff. Me slow, uh, a guy named Iceberg and, and a little guy named ICG. We didn't, we didn't find little V from Street Mentality until later. And then um, one of our boys named Sal brought little Vern with us. And then uh, we liked him from the start. Then we met Cliff Ritchie at a car show. And then we saw a lot of Shader Brown for the first time. And um, slow would be like, you know, let's let's hit that for a while. Let's you know see what's up. Let's see what's up. You know, so we do the shows around. Cliff kind of liked us though, cause we were gangster. You know, and then he weeded us from LCD. He weeded that. We weeded that group and became Slow Pain. I'll say Slow Pain first. Slow Pain. Me and Little Vern rest in peace. Now Slow rest in peace too, please. And um, when we started that group, we weeded out the other two, and then um, Cliff got us a deal, like a real deal, you know, uh, Lou Maganilla at uh, BNG, and uh, Tim O'Brien at SRC and Zoo Entertainment. That was at the time where I think on BET, uh, the Khadija, Khadija song was playing on the video. Khadija, Khadija, my boo, the queen. They were on Zoo. And Tongue Twister, now that's known as Twister, that was rapping on Kanye's albums and stuff, he was our label mate too, on that label. So this was our first encounter to jump in the business as young Mexicans from the hood, you know what I mean? So here we are, Slow loved it. Um, from that point, that's that's how it is. That's how. And this was under the name of Street Mentality. Yeah, this was Street Mentality. Now we we had a 
when we weeded from uh, LCD, we got a new name and, and uh, we were soul searching, I guess. And we just came up with that and went out and did that. And because um, uh, I remember seeing, I, I was telling you during the break that my boy Shotgun from Browntown. Shotgun, he, yes, He sir. was the first one that actually ever told me about you, uh, Slow Pain, you know, the whole Street Mentality crew. Yeah. And he gave me the CD, actually. And that was the first time that I ever saw, you know, um, um, Slow Pain. As a matter of fact, I think on the Tony Slide Show, we had the picture of the album or whatnot. Uh, wh what was the response that you guys got when that album dropped? Um, I think, see, that I, me, myself, I underestimated my people because um, I didn't think they were listening when we did music. Um, to that point, I, I, don't, I really wouldn't know, but I would say that they were listening. And I think uh, we were, I mean, we were getting fan mail. You know, what's that like these days? You know, we were actually getting envelopes with people writing to us. Today's probably comments and likes. Right, <laughs> right. So back then, uh, when artists for possibly this new generation listening, fan mail, you had a P.O. box. Right. And people right. would send you letters. Right. And then if you wanted to, you could reply. Right. Sometimes pictures, whatever. Right. You know? And we were all legit. You know, we had our publishing company signed to BMI. We were um, video. We're probably one of the fifth or maybe six Mexicans to get played on BET with a video. Uh, we were banned on UMTV Raps. Um, we had a drug deal inside the video. We were watching a TV in the video itself and the video in the TV was doing a drug deal and they still banned our video. So we were like, all right, at least we made it to the door. <laughs> Hello, we're here, you know? Right. So. That was a cool experience. And then to see our albums all across the United States, that was a good one, you know, so. That's good. But those that don't know, um, Slow Pain, his name, it's funny because Slow Pain's name came from Bobby from Lighter Shaded Brown, the DWTX, rest in peace. You know, another brother that I, I really love so much. Um, we were high in his living room it was me, Slow, and Bobby. Bobby was flipping some samples on the SP-1200. Clever gave him some um, 45s, some hot records, though, like some hot samples. And Bobby was slowing the, the tuning down, making them go slower, and making them, you know, we we're having a good time. We were smoking weed, and then I think Slow even took a hit. And Slow don't smoke weed, so he's right there smoking weed. And uh, his name wasn't Slow yet. His name was FBI, you know? That was his name, FBI, fully brown and insane. <laughs> that was his name. So uh, I was cool with it. You know, I I didn't think it needed any pizzazz, but for some reason, Bobby goes, he grabbed the joint from him and goes, you look like a slow pain. And from that point on, uh, I think my brother ran with that and he became slow pain. Like he just heard it. And he just said like, hmm, I'm, I'm him. I'm that. Yeah, wow, that's dope. That's something we didn't know. Right. You know, and I'm thankful you're here and letting us know that. Right, and rest in peace to all the brothers out there that, that were in this game. Um, you know, the name Chicano Rap, you know, I wish it was just called Rap, you know, or even the Latin, you know, Latin Rap, you know, the, you know, but I guess they have to call us something, you know, so when you see it, you know, it doesn't really ring a... It doesn't sound good in the ear, you know, because they don't call it black rap, you know, this, you know, so it's like, I just wish they would just label us in the rap game, you know what I'm saying? Or even Latin rap, if anything, Big Pun, Fat Joe, they're all there, you know, so. Um, but, you know, since you brought that up, uh, uh, how do you think Slow felt about what you're saying right now? Do you think he would agree with you? You know, to a point, maybe Slow saw it too, but then um, when Slow, once he was Slow Pain, he knew that the Cholo Stilo was going to be his money maker. Because with that, he knew that that was him. You know, it was me too where I grew up, but I knew he knew that a lot of his family, every, you know, you know, everything, you know, connected, you know, just, you know, just, you know, that, that life of the Cholo Stilo that people lived 
Slow loved it. He loved Pico. Uh, he loved the blue rag. He loved the, the Budweiser beer in a brown paper bag. That was him. White t-shirt. And you know, uh, it gives me a ball in my throat because, you know, I love my brother. Um, we started out so young. And uh, yeah, it just hurts to talk that he's gone now. Um, but I do this so people will know. Yeah. So you can, you know, all the Sloping fans or even Big Bandit fans or Old Town fans or Sal Capone fans or Little Blackie fans or, you know, all, you know, everybody that was in our circle or even Rack, Rest in Peace, uh, Large Shade of Brown, like all of us, like, you know, ALT, um, the list goes on and on. And for those I didn't mention, it's still Brown Love. You know, that was our song too, that was on the radio for about seven years on Power 106. It was on Demon's album, uh, Slow Me Demon. Uh, we had to take Slow off the verse because he was signed to hit a lick still, so Demon took the first verse. And that's the version that everybody heard on the radio. But the real one was with Slow at the front. And Slow had killed that too. Do you, do you have a copy of that? You know what? I do, not with me, but I can get that for you. Um, I think we even have it on some Old Town albums that we have too. The, this is for my Rasa album. Um, yeah, there's just so much, so many things, so many stories. Uh, our first paycheck in the business, that was something you know um going places our first airplane ride being hood kids on an airplane that's an amazing feeling <laughs> tell me about it that, I mean, that was the first time i got on a plane right and, and you, you know what it was going to florida <laughs> i was just and you know and i knew i wasn't gonna make any money but i was just happy to take that flight and just be there i was just happy to be there yeah and you know slow was too we were all we were all just happy just to be there, little hood kids. You know, we haven't done much in life, but just rolling around in the hood and, and dodge bullets, you know, and have a good time and try to get at women and just hey hey, you know, being your average cholo kids growing up in the, you know in the streets, just trying to see what's available, what opportunities are out there, and then uh, you know we fucked around and got a record deal. <laughs> yeah. That's how it have pretty much happened for me. So I, I can relate. Right. You know. Right. But I, I paid, uh, what? I think I paid uh, 350 for our first demo. Jam and James lived in Inglewood. Slow drove us. I paid, I, I was working at Whittier College as a, as, a, as a gardener. And I paid for the demo. And we used Slow's car to get there. And we made our first demo and got a record deal from a cassette tape. Awesome, and I know you know that that story of of your own of your own uh, situation. So it's like, yeah, it's it's an amazing situation. So when you no, get, it, it's a, it's an amazing feeling. We were talking about during the break how it's an amazing feeling to be able to walk into a record store, which there are none no more, and uh, sit back and see somebody buy your record. Yeah. You know, or you walk in and the record store is playing your record, or you turn on the radio and the radio is playing your record. Right. You know. Right. It, off on my tape. Right. You, you, I'll tell you my first feeling when they said we were going to go to Hawaii. Uh, 1992. Oh. We're flying into Hawaii. And I'm looking out. You know what's going through my mind? Man, the only time I ever saw Hawaii was on the Brady Bunch. Right. Hey, man, I swear. I, I think I just thought about like that same thing when I was there. I was just like, what are we doing here? I, <laughs> I only seen this with the Mano Tiki Tia on, uh, on the Brady Bunch. My damn self. The, those uh, shows that I watch... It's funny you say the Brady Bunch because when I got there, I said Mono Tiki Tia, and that's an episode in the Brady Bunch. Yeah, you know. So yeah, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. Slow, uh, I think Slow went and bought something over there and did some dance that he used to do. Cause man, we were happy being out there, man. And we were there with N Two D. Oh really? Yeah, when wow. we first went. You know, the, my only disappointment about Hawaii, I know it's gonna sound funny, but I wanted to get laid. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. I wanted to see what's up with that over there, too. No, well, let me clarify. I wanted them flowers. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what that means. Right. Because I, I saw that in the Brady Bunch, and I didn't get that. I was like, wait a minute, where's the lady that gives the flowers? Right. That was just Hollywood. Well, see, you wanted to get laid. Once we were performing, we uh, we actually performed in Hawaii with N2D, Live Shaded Brown, and it was us and a local there called Urban Joint. They were a local uh, rap group that was there, and we were performing on a weed ranch. The whole field was like miles and miles of fucking weed everywhere, man. And uh, the, once we hit the promoter, he pulled out a gang of weed. And, uh, you know, again, my, my brother Slow don't smoke but He doesn't smoke but He doesn't smoke but um, But when the promoter uh, pulled out... Because I, I hit him up. I, I'm a smoker. I've been smoking since a kid. So I hit him up. It says, man, do they got any weed? You know, you hear about the stories of right. Hawaii weed. You know, this, Hawaii, Hawaii, weed. You know, I'm there, man. Where am I going to... I'm not coming back anytime soon, I don't think. So let me taste this stuff. So I'm there. The promoter comes with a big old giant bag for everybody that was on the roster. And then he passes it around and slow grabs about two handfuls of bud and throws it in his pockets. And I'm looking at him like, you don't even smoke, bud. What are you doing, dude? You know, slow is just happy because, I mean, it was just something that, wow, like, again, like, wild, we're wild right. now. We feel like wild kids. Like, we were dogs, just, uh, no leash, no collar, no nothing. Run. That's what it felt like. Like we were just dogs running now. We're free. Right. And we're in Hawaii now, Mai Tais and all that shit out there, man. I mean, we did it all, man. You know what I'm saying? We have we had some good memories. Yeah. I have a lot of memories with Slope. Most of my greatest moments are with Slope. Yeah. You know, making money, um, doing albums, you know, be in the studio with him. He'd look at me for times. What do you what do you think, BZ? You know, and I just I come out with some shit and he just he'd kill it. Yeah. Uh, um. When was the last time you had spoken to him? Yeah. Uh, you know, in the business, like uh, let's take it like N.W.A. type situations, like Cube, Dre, all them niggas. You know, everybody that's you doing business with. You know, um, money, money, the business. You know, when you type friends, homies, once you step in this business with money and stuff, you know, things don't really go as smooth as you think it does, you know. My favorite line that Cube said when I heard him say his situation was, I, I caught you in the cookie jar. It's okay. Just give me what's mine and I'll keep rolling type deal. Um not into that sense, but just the way the business is. But yeah, me and Slow, uh, I guess we bumped heads and it just wasn't too too much to keep fighting over or something that probably would just keep happening over and over. So I guess we went our ways for a while. Mm -hmm. And you know, me being, uh, him being my brother so much like within, you know, a, a lifetime, I didn't think nothing of these years passing, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't think anything of, and and as I think now, you know, he made some, you know, more kids and, uh, you know, a bigger family, you know, collected some more friends and a whole lot of things that happened in that period of time of me, him not talking. But just like every time that we did fight as brothers, he would show up on the side of my house and say, let's get busy. You know what I'm saying? He'd be like, busy, let's get busy. And or he would call me or be on the side of my house already, you know, and we'd start making music. And I actually was waiting for him this whole time. Right. And yeah, to know he passed away, it's, um, a piece of me has died. But uh, just the spirit of us as uh, kids, I think I'm going to do some more music. Yeah. Okay. Um, where were you or, or when you found out he had passed, like, uh, was, was it a phone call? Was it a... Yeah, actually was, uh, I was in a great mood, man. I had just bought a big screen TV. I was, you know, my life changed a little since me and Slow hasn't been talking. So 
I kind of just mellowed out. And then my mother had passed away too. My mom, rest in peace too. So, rest in peace. Yeah, when you lose your mother, when you do this music, man, it just kills your vibe, man. Just, you know, especially when you're the one that's doing everything, you know, a lot of it, you know. I produce, I did choruses, I even sang on some shit, I, I rapped, you know. I'm a triple threat, as they say sometimes. Um, you get tired, you know, of mixing and everything for, you know, hours and things like that. So I guess I just, my, when my mom died, I, I lost that vibe of keep going. Yeah. And then without slow, at my shoulder pushing me, like, because I ain't gonna lie, man, like, I think without him around, I don't think I would have went as far as I went. Even in the business, I made more money fucking with slow than I made being signed on a major label situation, independent, whatever you call it. And it's, just, yeah, it's just crazy, man. When you lose that person, it's, that's it, you yeah. know? Kind of like they said when Tupac died, the outlaws, uh, when you take the head, that's it. Yeah. Let me ask you one last question. Um, you know, in, in closing, um, I know people say that when our loved ones pass on, right. some people believe that they can hear us. Right. You know? Right. Um, some people, some people believe that they're still around. You know, I know that you said you were waiting for him. I was waiting. Okay. It makes me cry too to think about it. But yeah, I was waiting for him because since we were kids, <clears throat> that's what it's been. Yeah. You know, brothers fight, but we still love brothers. Absolutely. Yes, of course. Of course. And, uh, and that's what it was. I know it pains me to ask you, but I want to ask you, if you could say something to him right now, what would you say? Wow. It would be real simple, though. I love you. And I got your family, dog. Don't worry. Rest in peace, brother. Thank Rest you for sharing. Oh, we're going to go ahead and take a break. Uh, we'll be back in about 10 minutes. Um, and we'll have our last guest. Uh, rest in peace, Sloping. Tracks of my tears, that was my song Now I'm rolling in 
mind Suckers can't take mine There's an eagle strap to the waistline Baby beast, call me Playboy yeah. Bass And I'm a cold piece of work and I'm about my cash Where the tweet at? Where my G's at? Tony G hooked it up Now the kick about to fuck it up It's all about the fed Motherfuck you and Uncle Ed Bitch say she wanna suck my dick for some ass I said, hell nah Little trick I ain't having that my pee with weak bread Say he know where the party at Slide, ride, step into the void low Faded off quid roll, mashing up my time Where the G's at? Where the bomb? Where the Thrago? Getting gone like a Vietnam vet Much fired in the Learjet We got the game that you hutches ain't heard yet Where the hoes at? Where the bomb? Where the Thrago? Getting gone like a Vietnam vet Much fired in the Learjet We got the game that you hutches ain't heard yet I just down to get the liquor the crew was getting thicker With so much game, we need a sticker We bumpin' the bitches quicker Than the rest of them cats that come to G-spot G's Fully vested with gas See, we highly heated All my boys is weeded Baby wanna break bread That's what I needed It feel good casting checks again I'm in the hood where it's nothing but a Mexican Now I'm at S.A. Loco Smoking on Endo All day multi Call me Cisco The Frisco Mac Known to put it down, homes From L.A. to the back I get my clown on Cali Rider Pulling all nighters, pull up beside the fly freaking do it live. Uh, we hitting switches, sipping on some cognac. Bitches sitting on the lap, playing let your money stack. Where the G's at? Where the bomb? Where the Thrago? Getting gone like a Vietnam vet. Much fired in the Learjet. We got the game that you hutches ain't heard yet. Where the hoes at? Where the bomb? Where the Thrago? Getting gone like a Vietnam vet. Much fired in the Learjet. We got the game that you hutches ain't heard yet. <laughs> Plug your shit like a diamond First class wine in the dining Roll and shine Versace love him Blasting heat with the dirty dozen Danny Blanco, that's a dirty cousin Don't get the twirl, motherfucker We the bad. Slow pain, Lil Don Why the fuck is sad? Where the cheese at? Where the bomb? Where the doggo? Getting gone like the Vietnam That much fired in the Lear Jack We got the game that you hutches ain't heard yet Where the hoes at? I'm a raider for life. Welcome to the black hole. What fools get cracked? Out of bounds, 
Cause homie, bring it back. Bring it back. Shot call, we facilitate, block the scheme. Nothing nice like Jerry Rice, living the dream. So paint Tim Brown, what? go downtown. Tony G like Gannon, gunning them down. Lil Dean, I'm the killer from the pit. Lil Dean, old town. You know I'm so sick, put it down like a raider. Robbing and killing, old town oh, raps. Straight dope dealing, dropping bombs like slugs to your cranium. 16 from the head, straight aiming up. I'm going deep, deep. Down the sidelines, I'm going deep Throwing up my gang signs, fourth quarter getting late Your life's at stake, I want more I'm Lil Demon the Great We do the walk walk, from city to city Do the walk walk, straight 51 fit We do the walk walk, this is gangsta on mine We do the walk walk, I'm a raider for life We do the walk walk, from city to city Do the walk walk, straight 51 fit We do the walk walk, this is gangsta on mine It's the walk walk, I'm a raider for life this song is for you crazy ass Raider fans Acting 51, 50 with the heat in my hand We do the walk on Silver and black, we do the walk on When we whooping that ass Tailgate party, I'm all drunk Busting freestyle out the back of my trunk Yeah, drink Budweiser and shave my head And got a Raider shield tattooed on my head To my Raiders over here, Raiders over there Throw your ones in the air To my OG Raiders Like Marcus Salad it's your song, what's up, how we long? They probably won't play this on the radio station But they'll play it all day in the Raider Nation I'm Mr. Slow Pain, a Raider for life It feels good to be a Raider, ask that fool Jerry Rice We do the walk walk, from city to city Do the walk walk, straight 51 fit We do the walk walk, this is gangsta on mine We do the walk walk, I'm a Raider for life We do the walk walk, from city to city Do the walk walk, straight 51 fit We do the walk walk, this is gangsta on mine Welcome back, everyone, to Rodeo Radio, episode 97. And uh, let me say this, and I said it during the live chat, though I'm a Cowboys fan, that song is my shit right there. Like, seriously, that song is like my shit. So um, I was bumping that shit all day yesterday on my ride. So, and I couldn't wait to play it for you guys. So that's my shit right there. Um, once again, rest in peace, Slow Pain. This, um, this episode was dedicated to his memory. May his voice live on forever. May his name live on forever. And we want to thank everybody for tuning in. So without further ado, please allow me to introduce my very special guest, Little Blackie. How you doing? I'm good, Tony. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks. Well, you know, you were the first one I hit up when I first heard of this. Yeah. And I told you, I hope this is just made up. I hope somebody's just playing around. I mean, it's probably right. a sick joke if somebody didn't play around like that. Right. right. And you said, no, I, I hadn't heard anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was actually at, at work when you hit me up about it. So, um, and it, it came out of nowhere. Yeah. So right away, I had uh, I had hit up slow through the number that I that I was talking to him through. And then right away, some uh, somebody had wrote back that, that I'm sorry, but Aunt Larry has um, passed away. So yeah. I, I was like, damn. Yeah, and then you I, hit then me I, back. I hit you back up right away. I was, I was like, okay, wow. It's, it, it was, you know, there were people hitting me up, and I was writing them back. No, this got to be a hoax, you know, because yeah, yeah, just yeah. recently somebody was saying that their page got hacked. Somebody pronounced their death or whatnot. So right. I was kind of like replying, thinking, no, no. I just talked to the guy not too long ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's how unexpected it was, you know. And um, it's just very, very sad. So I took it upon myself. I called you. You were the first one I called. And I said, we got to do something. Right. Uh, can you come through? And yes. he said, yeah. Yes. You know, so we put it together. And, and this is how we give um, people to join us. Uh, where we can reminisce and share stories about a brother, a friend, uh, an artist that we all love and listen to, you right. know. And this is how we pay homage and show our respect to him and to his family. Yes. You know, and, and I continue to encourage everyone to continue to pray for the family while they're going through, you know, this trial in their lives right now of losing a husband, losing a father, losing a brother, a friend, etc. So, but I know we're going to take a toast and um, I want you to give us the toast. All what right. do you want to toast yeah. to, brother? I want to toast to Slow Pain. Thank you for 
introducing me to the rap game that allowed me to I'm um, get to know such great people in the rap game as Band Yourself, I'm Yourself, everybody, I'm everybody from the G Spot, Tony, Nino, just Slow in, uh, introduced me to the whole um, our music game. And I want to say thank you, Slow, so much for everything. Yes. Yeah. May you rest in peace, brother. May you rest in peace. Let that one kick in a little bit because that one's burning my chest. <laughs> That's what I get for not having no dinner. But, um, you know, um, first of all, let me back up to Tony G when I interviewed him. He was like, little Blackie is my family. Spoke very, very highly of you. And um, when I talked to Slow, little Blackie, yeah, that's my dude. That's my dude right there. I know you were like the youngster out of all of them. Yes. Sh sh share with us how you first met Slow Bang. All right. So um, it was back probably when I was uh, about 14. My dad was a concert promoter. Um, I, I think I shared that mm -hmm. um, last time. And... um. On a few of the shows, he had got slow on it, and then slow, he was he was the type that, like it wasn't just like he was just like a big artist, and it was just like okay, yeah, yeah, and he would show up. Now he would keep in contact with my dad all the time, and then um, my my dad had mentioned to him that I was trying to rap because I had rapped in the garage and all that stuff, and then he would just invite slow over to um to the house for dinner, and um, on the weekends we would go out. And then I just got to know Slow like that. And then I remember on my um, on my 15th birthday party when my dad had that uh, surprise party at that club that I told you about. He had the um, strippers and everything. <laughs> well, Slow Pain actually performed for me right there too. Really? Um, on my 15th birthday party, yeah. Yeah, yeah, wow. so it was cool. So he was there too. And like that following year is when we really started working on, on music together. And wow. uh, he had... Um, he had asked me kind of like, all right, so what do you want to rap about? Like, so then I told him like the stuff that I was going through and I um, went everything. He's like, okay, all right, all right. So then he had, um, he introduced me to Tony G. He took me to the G spot. So I was lucky. I was fortunate enough to start in the rap game at that spot. I mean, at, during that time when Tony G was at the G spot and um, Nino Brown was there and Frost and just when right. everything was popping right there. And Two things I want to bring up. Number one, um, he performed for your 15th birthday. Yeah. Uh, by chance, I mean, I know you were 15. Do you still remember <laughs> some of the songs that he, he sang or he rapped out there? Um, I think he did, uh, uh, I think that's when he had the um, Saturday Night Balling song. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then he had, th they, he had just told him to uh, throw on a beat and he just freestyled and he talked about me and my birthday and wow. I, I, I turned 15. May fifth, May fifteenth, I'll be the one and only day. Like it was, it was cool. Like was I remember cool. that. Now, uh, I'm gonna repeat something that Toker said, uh, and I heard he didn't say it to me. I heard him say it in a video. Yeah, he talked very highly, like the way I do about Tony G, because that's some someone that a lot of us look up to. And uh, he said Tony G had much had so much talent. And I'm trying, I'm paraphrasing because I'm not I don't know word for word, but that's pretty much what he said. Had so much talent, he was up there like Dr. Dre, if not more talent than a Dr. Dre, okay? Yeah. I have to agree with that 100%, okay? The reason why I bring that up is because Slow Pain brought you to a guy that he already had gold and platinum plaques. Right. He had already made, you know, uh, winners out of rappers, Right. you know? Yeah. So he took you to a right place and he knew that, okay, he'll be in good hands with Tony G. Yes. Somebody had asked me a question. How come you never work with Toker? Now, here's what I said. This is my response. He had Tony G. He was in great hands. <laughs> he didn't need a Tony A. Yeah, yeah. He needed Tony G. So um, that's how highly I respect Tony. So there you are with Tony, and uh, pretty much your rap career begins. Yes. So was Slow always a part of your career was he like a mentor was he like a big brother uh, yeah he, 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 both 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 he he actually saw um when i first started he had he would pick me up on the weekends and then we would go i'm, I'm to his house and then I, we would write he'd be like all right this i want you to think about this 
I mean, he would have me write bars and he would write bars and, and then we would put, put songs to, together. I um, mean, then the first song that I recorded was that, oh, was that Oh Honey song. He pretty much wrote, wrote that, that whole song. He allowed me to change, change some bars here and, um, here and there. And then I, uh, I remember I'm in the booth. I would do it. He was like, no, 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 say it like, say it like this. And then Tony G would be like, all right, say, do, say, say this, say that, add this, add that. And, um, so slow introduced me to everything. Like, I would spend weekends with him for for like a few months while while we worked on that on that album, and then while we were working on that album, he had shows in Arizona, and then he would take me to to his shows in Arizona. I remember the first time that I flew, it was uh, it was with him. Wow. Uh, we had a show in Texas, so that was a, so that's a big memory for me. That, that the first time that I flew it, was it, with and Slow. A, and a, about how old were you when you guys? Did I was uh, I think I was sixteen. 16 turning 17 when we, um, when we were working on the first album. Okay, and then when you flew to Texas, here you are playing. Yeah. The first time you flew, you flew with him. Yes. Okay, so that's always going to be a memory. Right, yeah. Okay, you guys performed in Arizona, you guys performed in Texas. Being a 16, going on being a 17-year-old, you're still in high school. Yes. Um, what was that experience like, man? Uh, it was crazy. It, it was cool. Um, when during, during that time when we went to Texas... Yeah, I think we we were gonna be gone for from Thursday to like Tuesday. Um, so it, I don't know what's crazy. Something happened with the with my school uh, where I I had to ask. I had to talk to the principal and let them know that I wasn't gonna be there, and um, this is why. And slow pain actually came down um, to to my high school and talked to my um, um principal too, and it was it, wow. it was it was it was crazy. And and like throughout high school. It was uh, throughout high school. Like most of my teachers had had my posters on their walls because that's when I had already my uh, I had printed up posters ready before the album even dropped. So uh, um, a lot of people in my uh, and the teachers and everybody knew that I was already starting to rap. So so he went. Okay, let me rewind. He went to the school and spoke to your principal. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I could just, you know what the <laughs> I know, yeah, it's, it's you know, crazy. I, I mean, can, can, yo, check this out. He's got to go with me. <laughs> okay, I'm checking him out. Yeah, 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 it's crazy. It's like, I don't know, I, got, I was blessed enough to just be in that um, situation with, with I'm Slow. And it was, I, I got to spend a lot of time with him early in my career. Yeah, Take, taking the stage, you know, um, especially being on stage with him. I mean, yeah. I don't know a few people get to experience that, you know, especially you being at such a young age. Right. Um, if you can, you know, fill us in. I mean, what was that like being a youngster and being on stage with him? Somebody that you looked up to, somebody that was a, a mentor, somebody that was somewhat like a brother and someone that looked out for you, someone that helped you, someone that coached you. Um, you know, what was that like, man? Um, I don't know. It was like pretty much I was just like in awe, like, damn, like, because I would listen to his music from from on before and then I was just thinking like, damn, I, 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 I can't believe I'm right here with slow pain and yeah. and I'm gonna get to spend time with them and learn and learn learn from him, learn everything that I've known. Right. It all started with, with with slow. He taught me everything from the beginning. Right, right. Um w was there ever times that that he ever like sat you down and talked to you? Maybe you guys are on the plane. Maybe you guys sit next to each other. Maybe you guys are driving somewhere, and he kind of gave you that talk. I'll give the reason why I say that because there were times uh, I would be in the same studio with Dr. Dre when he was doing the NWA stuff, and he would just say little things that I call nuggets, like little things here and there that I still carry on with me today. Like he would say, "Simple sales. Don't ever overproduce a song. If you have to use more than twenty-four tracks, you're overproducing." Mm -hmm. Like he would tell me stuff like that. And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh shoot, you know. Yeah. Uh, Quick wouldn't even tell me stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's the right time. You got to wait for the right time to drop your album. You just can't drop an album anytime you want. Yeah. You know, timing is everything. Yeah. So little stuff like that. Was there ever stuff like that? And I'm sure there was that he might have shared with you that kind of like Dolly Girl shared, you know, that he pretty much told her, hey, look, if you're going to do this, you're going to do this. Yeah. You know, was there ever any times? It was uh, like, yeah, he he was pretty much like that with me too. Like, all right, so if, so if you're going to do it, you have to be 100% committed so that's why he would pick me up on the weekends and spend days day, days with him so that he would make sure that all right like i'm really 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 committed to doing this and then i remember like uh like like the, the like my first show too 
I mean, he's the one that, he's the first one that taught me to, that when we're on stage, whoever's rapping first is in front and you walk behind from left to right. So, <laughs> so like, so like, like I, I always remember that. Like, and I'm like glad you shared that because I'm not a rapper. So to me, that means something like, you yeah. know, uh, of course, I used to coordinate our high C shows. I would tell them what song will go on first, our intro music, when I'm going to cut and scratch, what song we'll, go, we'll do last, and then our outro music. I would do that stuff, but he would do the, our guy that would do the ad libs type of deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know that, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm glad you're sharing that because I didn't know what rappers did that. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty much like the, the first few shows, I, I just went up there with him and I did his ad libs. So that's why he was like, all right, so, so when you see me walking on to the right, you start walking behind me to the left. And so like that all that always stuck with me and just some little things here and there right okay now um i, I really want to get into this part because i don't know if it was you or him or i think you reposted something that he had posted on his page mm -hmm. that he was back in the studio because you recorded him yes no 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 uh that was from his page okay that was from yeah, his yeah, page yeah. okay and he was back in the studio and, yes. I, and i know you sounded very excited to repost it you even tagged me yeah you know yeah, yeah. and i know you, when we talked you said you know what and i was telling him about you we need to get in there and i think i don't know if he told yeah. you yeah we had talked already or whatnot no, no, no. yeah but we had already talked so he it. knew already you okay, know because yeah. i was on him like we need to get you in here bro. yeah yeah we need yeah. to get you in here you know but uh when you saw that he was back in the studio what were your thoughts, man? I, man, I, 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 I was so excited. I, 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 I had, I had hit him up, and I was like, man, that's that's really good because actually, so we hadn't talked in years. It was probably about eight or nine years. Just, mm -hmm. just, I mean, because he went off doing his his family his family thing and the on um, baseball thing. Yeah. And I had requested him on Instagram probably like a year and a half ago, maybe two, maybe two two years ago, and he finally, um, he finally um, hit me up in in March of this year really yes he was like man i'm sorry man on that i didn't i'm gonna approve your request before but but i was going through your page and i see that on that you have a family and your kids man i'm i'm so proud of you blacks and that that right there meant a lot wow yeah so um and then ever since march we were i'm hitting back i'm calling each other i'm um, back and forth texts messages he had called me he was like it, I got into like 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 about May. Then he started really asking me about who are the hot producers right now. Who's 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 hot right now? Because I really got that itch right now to come back. That's dope. Yeah. So he was really like he he was really eyeing on on, on making a comeback. So so I uh, he had I wanted me to get him in touch with Fingers, and uh, I told him about this uh, Super Bowl the remix that I had with uh, with King Little G and. Conejo, and he, and then I was like, "What's up, man? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get you on it." He's like, "Man, I don't do nothing for anybody, but blacks. I'm gonna do this for you, right?" He's like, "I'll send me the beat right now." So I send him the beat through email. I'm not lying. I'll show you. Like five minutes later, he, he um, he sent a voice message back with him recording a verse on that beat, or, beat already, a, a whole um, 16 bar verse. It, it was just a natural. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's like, man, like, man, I never. Like a, like that feeling never left. Like he, he's, like, I got it. He's all these these bars are easy. He's all, it's, it's natural. Because right. I was asking him like, damn, fuck, how'd you write a verse so fast? Because it, it right. was literally like five like five minutes. But I know um, it wasn't something that he had already written because he he had King Lil G's name in it. He had Conejo's name in it. He had the year twenty twenty one in it. So he wow. so, and I have that verse in my phone right now, and I, I was trying to figure out a way to try to pull those vocals so I could put it on the actual beat right. beat um, because he he I did rap on the beat so and uh so that I could try to add it to the song right right well I'm sure um fans would be excited if that were to happen right yeah, yeah. you know um that way his voice could live on yeah you know what I'm saying because that's the purpose of this that his name and that his voice could live on forever yes and for generations to come would know who slow pain is yeah you know who he was and that's why we're talking about him now you know it's it's um uh for lack of better words it's sad that we have to do this now i wish that we could have interviewed him here mm -hmm. but you know what i always preach that family comes first and um he had a family to take care of yeah you know he had a job and uh he had a wife and he had kids to attend so you know what any of you can wait you know but uh we were working on um dates but it just never 
never, you know, never happened. Now, um, let me say this pertain pertaining to slow pain that people always ask me, you know what, uh, who's going to come on next? Don't worry about who's going to come on. Just wait. Yeah. Just wait. Okay. Like people are going to be surprised who's going to be here Wednesday. Okay. I'll tell you after. But um, people have always requested this individual and um, he'll be here and, you know, thank God that he'll be here. He accepted our invitation and I'm very excited for him to be here. He's one of the forefathers of what we call um, this whole genre Chicano rap. Okay. But tomorrow's not promised. Right. His passing took us all by surprise. It shocked us. Yes. You know, Kobe Bryant's passing shocked us. But this one, and I'm sure I could speak for you, it, it fucked me up, man. Yeah, yeah. Like it did, because hearing his voice, knowing he was coming back, knowing he wanted this, knowing he still had it in here and he wanted yeah. to let it out. Yeah. And then it not happening because this body one day is going to give. You know, when people ask me, um, how you feeling, man? I haven't talked to you in a minute. Here's what I say. Brother, as long as I'm not dead in jail or in the hospital, I'm blessed. There's no room for complaining. There's no room for hating. Okay? Because I know that I have more years behind me than in front of me. Yeah. Okay? So, what I like to say in these last days, I want to help others. That's what I want to be remembered for. Helping others take the next step. Open doors for people. That's what I want to do. And I believe by him mentoring you, he was opening doors and you're able to be here to talk about it yeah. and and to pretty much thank him yes. for uh, for teaching you and showing you the way. Now it is up to you to show someone else what he instilled in you. Right. Yeah. So yes, yes. Yeah. Right. So so we thank Slope for that. You yes, know, thank you. Because you probably wouldn't be here speaking if he had never invested in you. Right, right. No, yeah, that's 100% true. You know, right. so yes. as we get older, you know what, let's invest in others and let, let's let let it go down the, the line, you know? Yeah. So um, I know I can't ask you how did you find out because I'm the one that called you. Right, yeah. But um, what is one thing that you can take away from Slow's life him being a part of your life that will last forever. I, I know you've already shared enough, but, you know, is there anything that maybe that you could say, you know what, Tony, one day he sat me down or one day he talked to me or he did this and it just stayed with me forever. Is there anything like that? Um, really just about, just, just probably just ha like the, the um, talks that we had, like, I still remember, like, um, every time that I'm on the 10 freeway going up that hill from Pomona to um, Covina, I, every time till this day, like, I still, I'm, I'm, when I'm driving on that spot right there, I always think about me and him because we would always drive up and down that spot, up and down that spot, up and down that spot, and, and just having conversations. And I'm just glad that I, that I got to learn how to write verses and how to build a song from slow. Yeah. And, and that's a beautiful memory, and I'll tell you why. Because me being in my early 20s, the studio where I used to record at was in Alhambra. And this is through Steve Yano, who was my older brother, my father figure, my mentor, since I've been 11 years old. And I was in my early 20s, and he used to drive me back all the way. He lived in Whittier. He drive to Alhambra and drive me back all the way to Wilmington. Mm -hmm. And he would say, what do you want to talk about? Every single time. And I would just start pouring out things that I was going through. You yeah. know, I mean, I was a young father. I had problems that I was going through. I didn't know if I was coming or going. You don't know how many times I've called them in the making of the first High C album, how many times I called them and I said, I don't want to do music no more. It's just too much. Damn. Because I was going through a lot. I was a, I was a youngster and I can actually see that I was pretty much lost. I loved music, but I needed direction. And where I, what I didn't get at home uh, because, you know, being one of 10 kids, it's, it's, it's impossible for your parents to spend quality time with one child. Mm. So he spent that time with me. He had two daughters. He had no sons. So in, in oh. a sense, he had various sons, like, you know, maybe a, a handful that he would invest in and talk to. So in a sense, that's the way I see those long rides that you had yeah. with him. You know, those long rides that we would take 710, uh, get on the 405, come down Wilmington and draw me off, you know, here. 
And he would, okay, uh, call me tomorrow, you know. And I would spend hours with him on the phone just talking to him about hmm. issues and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, good, and, yeah. and those are my memories. And that's why his name will always live on here and Rodian Radio because of his Swami stand. And Slow Pain will always live live on not only through here, but also through you. Yes, you know, yes, yes. And through everybody's stories that shared. So, yeah. so uh, I'm thankful that you were able to come, you were able to share and tell us uh, what this man meant to you. Oh, yeah. I, I know this, Thank you for there's much out. more you want to share, brother. So I do a lot of talking, so please forgive me. So I don't know. Uh, go ahead and anything you want to share, anything you, you might have left out, any story that you want to talk about, let's do it now, man. <laughs> no, um, like I, I want to talk about slow. He, like he, I've never held, held anybody back. He, when G Fellas got signed to uh, to this record company called uh, Celeb E N T, yes, he had called me. He was like, "Hey, um, we got signed over here. I um, want to work on something over here with them." So I was like, "Yeah." So then we had went over there. That's that's when I was working on that big balling album with the Super Baller song and everything. So I had took that album to them. Um, I mean, we didn't work out a deal um, with, with them, but then when when he was working with Hitalik and Pablito and Tony G. And Jerry Heller, he had hit me up again, like, hey, look it, I'm working on here. I'm doing this over here with I'm with them. Are you interested? So so he would always look out and introduce me to new people all the time. So that's what like I'm I'm so thankful that he was never like he he didn't ever hold anybody back. He, he was always yeah. there to help and guide and yeah. like he like I, I I had got signed to hit it because of slow. And I you know, I'm I'm thankful and yeah. He, he, I mean, he just helped me out throughout uh, pretty much my whole um, rap career. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you had spoken to him before he had passed? Um, it was about, I had spoken to him on the phone probably in late July, I think. Okay. Because he had hit me up. Because we had, since 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 March when he had first hit me up. Yeah. Uh, we were going back and forth. Every, pretty much like on like a few times a week. Throughout uh, March, April, May, June, uh, he had hit me up for uh, Father's Day. Um, he told me Happy Father's Day. I told him Happy, um, I'm Happy Father's Day. He, he talked. He talked to me about his kids. So, like, we were really in contact a lot, and and it just showed me how much he wanted to really get back into this game. Like, he would ask me, like, I I could show you texts. Like, yeah. he would ask me questions about producers and artists and who's charging this. Um, how much do you think I could charge for for this? Like he, like he I wanted me to take him to uh, Salas's and yeah. like he he was really 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 focused on getting back in it. I, he, like he told me like like I want to shock the world and I'll come back with a little EP like of some tight stuff because I I've, I've been saving some some really good music. Um, and I got a lot of stuff in my head right now. Like I, I could show you texts and like I, like it like it made, awesome. it made me so happy to see him back in it because yeah. we hadn't talked in years and I mean it was good to hear his, his our voice when he finally called me yeah and, and we were talking and we, it was it was late at night and we just talked talked about family about music like he really wanted to get back in it and he, he and it uh, made me happy uh, how much he had told me that he was proud of me to see me where I'm at from from where I've um, started at um, and I thanked him for it because it was all because of him yeah. and I was I'm glad that I was able to tell him that and, I, and I'm so glad that I was happy to, well I'm so glad that I was able to talk to him just uh, recently and it was it was kind of weird how, how he, he just started hitting up on um, different artists I'm um, recently yeah. out of nowhere because it's been years like I've been trying to get a hold of slow for for years yeah. years you know the thing that really, that really fucked me up the most, was um, when we had hung up from our conversation. It was good talking to the guy because again, it had been years. You know, yeah. I mean, I hadn't seen Slow in person since when I was recording with him, in 1997, somewhere around there, and uh, we did like two songs together, and. Oh, yeah. um, It really missed me up because when he hung up, he texted me that song I remember. And uh, I saw it 
I saw I, I saw the text, okay, you know, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll listen to it later. But that's what I said. About two weeks later, you know, I heard he passed. So I'm laying in bed, and I go through his text, and I press um, the link, and it's a song I remember. And um, uh, when I heard him say my name on there, makes tapes all day by Tony A, it fucked me mm -hmm. up, man. Like, and I never had a chance to tell him thank you. You know, it like really, really like messed me up. So, uh, but I'm gonna say it now. I thank you. I thank you. So, with that, um, I wanted to ask you if you could say anything to him right now. What would you say? Um, thank you. Thank you for taking the the time out of your life to help me help. Um, help a young artist that didn't know anything and school me and teach me and guide me. Um, I'm lucky enough that I got to tell him thank you recently just because we hadn't talked in so long. So we were trying to, we got to catch up on everything. So um, I'm really blessed for that. And I thank Sal, Sal Capone for, uh, for hitting me up and um, in, inviting me to slow services. Um, it was, there was a lot, a lot of people there. It was really good to see that many people there and, and it's like it was a really big crowd and y you can see how many lives that he touched not only and you can see his family and some of the guys from the music game but then a lot of the baseball kids the, uh, there was a lot of baseball players there the, the, all of their their families so it was really good to see how many lives that he touched outside of this rap game it was it was a really big um turnout it was really 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 big and i was glad to get to see him on one last time it 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 hurt walking up there to see him but i was really 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 thankful and glad that i that i was able to do that yeah well if i had an opportunity to tell him something i'm just gonna go ahead and say now i love you brother yes that's what i would say that's what i would say so with that we come to our conclusion of this episode and i hope people share this you know and um I hope we don't have to do this anymore because I don't want to lose any more brothers. Right. So, um, anything else you want to say before we, we end? Uh, no, just, I'm going to love you slow. Thank you for all the memories. Thank you. Yes. And thank you, Tony, for, thank you for, for the invitation. Thank you, Little Blackie. Thank you, Sal Capone. Thank you, Big Bandit, for coming through. Thank you, Dolly Girl. Thank you, Magic Girl, for coming through. Um, Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank everyone who has supported Rodian Radio, who has supported Slopane throughout his career. Um, I'm just lost for words, so I just want to tell everyone thank you for tuning in. And uh, may we always continue to, you know, continue to pray for his family. That's the only thing I can ask. Just pray for his family because he left uh, um, daughters and a son and a wife and a family so once again rest in peace low pain thank you guys for tuning in god bless and we'll see you guys uh wednesday <laughs> they say one man can't change the world but i never know if i don't try thank you lord oh father for another blessed day the world is a ghetto so do you i pray hood times the Good times, they come and go, I live day to day And I take life slow, I won't slow This morning, feeling kinda strange How could the world get better? The hood needs a change Stop the violence, keep the peace Let's all get along, Let's get along. Love and happiness by L. Green, that's my song yeah. There's something wrong when we killing each other Over some streets we don't own A place we call home Our children all alone Growing up evil ways Dropping out of school with no grades Damn, Damn. what's the future when we living in the there's no future in the past, you can't fix broken glass I'm a soldier for my people, so I had to speak my mind Thank you, Lord, oh Father, same verse, second time Just raising feeling I'm feeling good Nobody tripping in my hood Nobody tripping in my hood Across the world, who love it like I do? Good looking now, round love back round to you. Love. It's a war every day, struggling to breathe. I miss the good ones that's gone. Resting in peace, every soul, every hood, every youngster to no good. Put
macho, eat away, learn to live another day I swear it's never too late to be a better man I can't get a job, I can't, yes you can The doctor said I only got three years to live But I'ma fight till I'm gone, in the name of my kids I'ma fight till I'm gone, for my people to rise I'ma fight for 20 years, to the doctor's surprise To all my players that's ill, I know that it's real Say a prayer when you down, it's better than pills, come on Another homie got saved and got blessed. God bless. I'm not a preacher. I'm speaking words from the heart. Don't get it twisted. I've been down from the start. From the game. Slow pain, little savage. Love the father and the son. Today I made a difference and I threw away my gun. Just freezing, chilling, feeling good.